Hi everyone, this is Anil. In this video, we will see how to create a jar file to consume Windows credentials from a file which is locally available on the web server and use that as credentials. So the tools that we have used are Java and Visual Studio Code. Let's get started. Uh, I have created a GitHub uh, repository which has all the instructions on how to implement this. So we'll follow that. The first thing we do is uh, we have to install external credential storage plugin on your instance. So if it's a PDI, then you can do it from developer.servicestore.com by going to uh, activate plugin. And here you can uh, select external credential storage, this plugin here, you can activate that. Or if you're doing it on client instance, then you should be able to uh, make a request uh, directly via support uh, support or service right so by using one of the two methods you will install this plugin called external credential storage plugin so once you do that uh, next we'll create a jar file that can resolve the credentials so the purpose of this jar file is this is going to be used by the the mid server when it is trying to resolve the credentials so for that first we have to install java sc8 on your mid server vm so i'm currently logged into my mid server vm and i go to uh, Oracle Java site and look for uh, Java 8 and then find the installation for Windows Server and look for x64 installer, download this and install it. So once you install that, it creates a folder like uh, this here. So see program files Java. And here you'll have, it will create both GRA and JDK, right? So within JDK, there is a folder called bin, and this is what we have to set in the path. So you go to environment variables, and you'll set that path. I mean, this is all basic setup, but if you're new to Java, or if you're not, uh, if you don't do that very often, then you can follow the steps, right? So we'll create a variable called Java underscore home, and then point that to the bin folder. So once you do that, you can restart the, the VM. Right. Or you can also do it after you do all the setup. Right. Either way is fine. So, but first step is to set up the Java home. Then next is uh, uh, then you set the path for Java bin as well. Uh, so, so in path you have to say new and then uh, browse here. Let's be seen. Program files, Java. So this is the next step. Right? So once you do this setup, then we will have to uh, create an environment variable called credential resolver file. Now this this variable is used by the the Java program that we want to create in a minute. Now basically, this is the location where the the credentials of that Windows machine are stored, right? So again, the goal of this uh, setup is to be able to log into a Windows machine, or the Windows VM. Right? So the credentials will be stored in this file. So the file looks like this. So if you go here, uh, look for C. So the, this is the file. It basically will have uh, two variables or two, uh, two attributes. The first one is called disco underscore user dot windows dot user is equal to dot slash slash administrator right? dot backslash backslash administrator. So this is a local account. The next one is disco underscore user dot windows dot eswd dot and then this is the password. Right now this disco dot user is the credential ID. So this has to be exactly same as what you give in the credential ID uh, that we set up. And then this is the type of the credential because it is Windows, we're using Windows, right? If it's a different type, then we'll use the corresponding type. So this is the format of this file. And this exact uh, file, I mean, the path to the file along with the file name will be your environment variable. So let's go to environment variables again. And if you see here, so credential resolver file, and this is the value for that. Once we set up that, the next is we have to create a .java file with name is equal to credential resolver.java. Again, this name has to be exactly same. Uh, the content of the file is mentioned here, uh, which is all of this. 
right so we will have to create that file so right here credential resolver.java so if you try to understand this uh, it is basically within a package called com.snc.discovery. Again, this cannot change. This has to be exactly the same. And then here, if you remember, we have created this environment variable. So this is where it is consumed. Uh, but if this variable is not defined, then it will go and look for the uh, properties file in this path. Default prop file path. Again, this is the place where the file is present. Right? So which is this one here. And then after that, the remaining fields, the remaining part of code, you don't have to modify it. This is again coming from service not docs. So you can re you can use the same uh, uh, like code. You don't have to touch it. The only thing you'll modify is this line here. Everything else is as is. Right? So, but if you understand, if I understand, you'll see that it is trying to get argument ID, ARG ID, which is ID. And then uh, there's a string identifier configured in service not instance. And then there is IP addresses and so on and so forth, like the type and so on. So basically, these are a set of variables which are used uh, to, uh, which will allow the mixer to resolve the credential. Right? So the first set are the ones which are more like input, and then these are all the output. Like this is the, the user name that is returned from the resolver. And these are all the inputs that are passed to the resolver script. Uh, similarly, you'll get the username, the password, and the passphrase, if any, or the private key, if any. And depending on the type of credential, uh, these values will be returned accordingly. Or these are the variables that you can use to return these values, right? Uh, and then, then this is the, the function uh, public credential resolver. And then here we have this uh, load props where we are actually loading the properties. Here we are trying to you know implement some exception handling and so on. Uh, and and then in this function called map resolve we are actually trying to create a map which contains the the, the, the values such as your username password uh, private key passphrase all of this here yeah. uh, so this basically will have all the data that is returned from your uh, credential store or your or your file where you are storing the credentials so this is this part does that now uh, and then uh, you're basically creating a object to credential resolver and then you're trying to uh, load the properties and then you're trying to uh, uh, traverse the key set and then you're trying to read the values here if there's any error yeah. and that is that so Yeah, so this structure has to remain the same because that's how Mitsa will understand this. But that is about this Java file. So once this Java file is created, the next step is to create a class file for this. Right again, standard Java setup. So to create a class file, you just have to uh, uh, run this command here. I mean, I had to run all of this because uh, the path was not set correctly. But you don't have to do all this. You can just do a Java C. Right? But if you're getting any error when you're trying to execute Java C, then you can get the full path. Uh, and this X lint is used to uh, check for any warnings in the, in the code or errors in the code. So, yeah. and, uh, and then, yeah, you just run this, uh, give this as input, and then you get this output called uh, uh, credential resolver dot class in the same location. And then we'll create this folder called com snc discovery in the same hierarchy, which looks like this. Uh, so that we can make a package uh, out of this, right? So once we create this folder structure, we'll copy this credential dot resolver in this location, and once that is done, we'll run the jar ex execution, execution or ex uh, exe file to create a file called cred res dot jar. C has to be capital and R has to be capital. Again, this has to be exactly same uh, for the setup to work. So once this file is created, then you will uh, uh, take this file and then you will. Uh, do the remaining steps in service now, right? So the, this file looks like uh, this here. So cred cred res dot r, and then this is the folder structure we have created to allow that packet setup. Right? Now, when you are creating this cr 
DRS dot JR. It is important that that stays in JR executable of uh, eight version eight uh, Java eight because if you do it with the more recent version such as such as Java twenty, then it won't work. Right? It will throw an error saying that uh, it has to match that exe uh, version. Right? So you need to bear in mind that when you install Java, you have to install Java eight uh, or you have to look at the documentation to see if it can accept latest Java version. Now once that is done, the next is to continue the next steps in the service now. So there's a table called vault underscore configuration. So which is uh, this table here. So here, uh, yeah, this one. So vault underscore configuration, let me show XML. <clears throat> so this table has the, uh, uh, is, is where we'll create this vault information. The name should be CRED. RES again, it has to be exactly same, right? Uh, so once that is created, the next step is to attach this jar file to mid server jar files. So for that, we'll go to a table called uh, uh, ECC underscore agent underscore jar. Again, uh, here you have to populate a few fields. The first one is the name. Again, the name has to be exactly same as the jar file. And then version you can give depending on what is a version. For example, if you're doing it for the first time, you can do give zero or one, and then you can add source and description fields to make this more uh, readable, right? And then once that is done, you save the record, then you attach this file. So once you attach this file, then ServiceNow will initiate uh, uh, something called as uh, a file sync uh, process. So. So this one here, it will say run system command file change. So once that is done, then it will try to execute a uh, few entries in ECC2 such as uh, file change, right? Uh, so the idea behind this is to sync this jar file onto mid server. And it will take like five to 10 minutes for the jar file to sync, right? So once the jar file is synced, then it should be available in a folder called agent external lib ext lib. The file name is called arias.jar, right? It will be in this location. So when the file is available here, then that proves that the file got synced correctly. Right? So once that part is done, then the next step is to uh, uh, again, once you verify that all of that, then you can create entry in the credential table. So you go to Windows credentials. Uh, and so this is the Windows credential table. Here you'll give the name. DISCO user dot external credentials. Again, this name can be of your choice, but the credential ID should exactly match what you have given in the in this file you have created. So we created a file called uh, uh, this one here, right? And within this, you have added this uh, uh, username and password. So this has to match exactly what you give here, right? Otherwise, this is not working. And then you have to check the checkbox called external credential store. Once you do that, then it will give you an option to select the drop down. So it will say CyberArk or CredArius. This comes by default. This is a custom we have set up. So once you select that, you save it. You can also select the mid server if you want, if you want, uh, you know, uh, if the credential only works for that mid server. So once that is done, then you can test this. Click on test and then give the IP address of the mid server, which is this one here. And then, uh, can verify that uh, uh, if it's working or not. Click on OK. It takes a minute. So it says credential validated, right? That means the credential is successful. So now to understand what, hap what happens in the background, we can look at the agent log. So if you go here, look for uh, logs, and look for agent 0.log.0, uh, we can see how it is trying to consume this uh, setup we have done. Uh, so if you go to the bottom, you can see that uh,
So it is trying to use this credential provider. Uh, so, So you see here it is uh, sending all these commands and so on. Right? Uh, so it is doing a file read it operation, which is which means it is trying to read the properties file here. Uh, and let's see what else is there. So I'm trying to check for the log to see if it tells you if it is accessing the credential sort of that we have done. What it is doing in the back end and Checking if there is anything in the log. Uh, so this is all heartbeat, heartbeat, and so on. Uh, let's look at the GCP. Is there anything? So here, okay, it is trying to access a config file. That's what happened here. But then uh, this is the last two entries. So basically, this command pipeline uh, is one output, one input. Let's look at these four and see what happens. So it is trying to, uh, yeah, it is trying to do the run the test credential command here. And it has got the credential data right as part of this. So let's see what happened here. So it has, uh, yeah, this is a response to, uh, again, the, the, the credential request, I believe. And same thing here. Again, here you can see the credential uh, is populated, right? So basically, that's happening in the background, if you see. But uh, yeah, this this is a place where you can verify. Now, if you run into any errors as part of the setup, then you should see that in the log, right? For example, uh, if you see uh, like this one here, right? It, it will write a log like this saying that uh, the external credentials API is not installed correctly or not is not correct. So if your setup is not correct, then you should see errors like this. You'll also see an error uh, within this uh, credential record itself. Like when you're trying to uh, run the credentials, also you'll see the error if it is not correct. For example, when you're doing a test, if there's any setup issue, then you also see some see error in the pop-up window. Right? So there are two places where you can check the error. One is in the log, but some, you also in some scenarios you'll see it in the screen as well. So that is about the setup. So let's do a quick recap. Uh, so first, we will have to uh, do some setup within ServiceNow by installing some plugins. And then after that, we'll do a setup on the mid server. So some of the setup is done uh, to create the jar file, which doesn't have to be done on the mid server. It can also be done in any place where you have Eclipse or some other tools. Right? But uh, yeah, if you follow this step-by-step -step instruction, then you can do it in the mid server itself. And then uh, uh, once that is done, then you create some required files for storing the credentials and then and then you'll do the required setup in service now for credential vault uh, and then the mid server jar files and so on. Right? So in this process, mid server gets restarted uh, once when it is trying to attach the jar file. So that is expected. Uh, and then after that, uh, yeah, you should be able to test the setup. So that is about this recording. Uh, thank you for watching. This is Anil.